Hello everyone and I'd like to show you one more very beautiful and a very nice chess game from the history of chess and this time again we are going to check out one of the uh, typical chess games of Jose Raul Capablanca uh, his opponent was Edward a uh, sergeant who had the white pieces a chess master from England and he was one time the chess champion of London uh, this chess game was played in 1935 in England. So Capablanca had the black pieces and this is also again uh, one of the very simple looking, effortless looking chess games of Capablanca. Effortless and simple. These are the two words that we can use when describing the style, the flamboyant style of Capablanca. So in this chess game Capablanca had the black pieces and I think we should check out this chess game from the perspective of Capablanca. So it is going to be easier to understand his ideas. So we have e4 by the chess champion of London. e6 and Capablanca is playing the French defense. I think he didn't use this opening many times. d4, d5 and we are going to the exchange French territory. Bishop to d3, knight to e7, developing the pieces, pinning the knight, knight up, knight back, bishop back, c3, queen to d7, knight to g3, and h5. By Capablanca, rook over, so he is charging from the king side, and Capablanca castled from the queen side, opposite side castling, h3 asking a question, and Capablanca is pushing the pawn. Uh, attacking the knight, so knight goes back and bishop to h5, simply defending the bishop and the knight is still pinned, bishop back, unpinning, knight to g6, knight to g5 and simplifying the game, exchanging but actually in this position all of the sudden I think black is slightly better because black has uh, the e-file, the control of the open file so rook takes, rook takes, because if not capturing the rook, uh, black can capture the rook. After queen takes, uh, rook to e8, as you can see, it looks unpleasant. Uh, this is not like losing or something, of course, but Capablanca like to improve, like to improve his position step by step, and then with baby steps in snail speed, actually. And then eventually, in the end game, after simplifying the game, he was exposing those weaknesses. So that was the style of Capablanca. And he was actually calculating pretty deeply. He had such intuitive and deep understanding of the position. So it looks very simple on the surface, only on the surface. But actually, he was calculating pretty deeply. That's why they called Capablanca the human chess machine. Anyway, so... He has the open file, so this is unpleasant slightly for white. Bishop up, knight up. And queen to g4, actually in this position, let's play uh, some random move. Then queen to f5 is unpleasant for white. After defending the knight, then we can push to g5. Uh, and as you can see, black is pressing white in the king side. So black is slightly better in this position. So queen to g4 but this move also has a downside Capablanca is exchanging the queens and he has creating a double pawn structure f f6 capturing the knight and defending the knight and infiltrating on the second rank leaving the h pawn but attacking the b pawn and also Capablanca has the bishop so defending the b pawn who rook to b1 and Capablanca is defending the h-pawn with pushing the g-pawn g5. And as you can see in the king side, a black looks pretty solid. And in the queen side, a white also has some weaknesses. Both in the queen and in the king side, white has some weaknesses. So knight to e1. And Capablanca in this position, he played a very annoying move. Uh, for white so with going back with the knight basically surgeon wants his knight on d3 but in this position actually black has a very strong move can you see that move what would you do actually there are not so many alternatives in this position 
And this is why uh, enjoying the chess games of Capablanca is very simple uh, because his moves are pretty obvious and simple and it is easy to understand. So Capablanca played knight to a5 and in this position he is targeting on c4 and after knight to c4 targeting the weaknesses. So knight to d3, knight to c4 actually in this position black can't defend. A knight to c4 because if pushing the pawn a to b3 then capturing the a pawn who rook takes on a2 so knight to d3 but capablanca is simply getting in with the knight and this is a strange position because i think in this position white is almost in zugzwang interesting isn't it so this is a strange zugzwang position for white almost and we have b3 so what do you do here as white let's check out what happens if capturing the bishop and damaging the pawn structure g takes on f4 and then b3 defending the b pawn and knight to d6 both threatening to capture the pawn and threatening knight to e4 so if a4 then simply knight to e4 double attacking the c pawn and also attacking a on f2 so in this position if rook to a1 then still knight to a4 double attacking the f pawn and also the c pawn and actually defending this is not easy so this is just one example of course and instead of uh, rook to a1 what happens if f3 then rook takes on a2 of course this is dropping the a pawn okay so as you can see, defending against Capablanca is not easy. Knight to c4, b3, and then knight goes back. Ooh, rook to b2. So black, eh, white wants to simplify the game. Simplifying the game and hoping for the best and getting in with the king. Moving the king up to the board. So king to f2, knight to b5. How to defend the c pawn? Actually, white is forced to go back knight to d1 and then c5 a4 knight goes back king to e2 knight to e6 king to d3 king to c6 knight in and in this position actually black has a very strong move can you see the next move of capablanca he played a very annoying move actually it is not very easy to see but so actually white is trying to hold this position together but it is not that simple uh, the king is babysitting the d-pawn uh, finally getting in with the knight but this is the idea of capablanca moving the bishop back did you see the idea so knight to d2 and in this position actually black has a winning move so vacating on f4 and placing the knight on f4 knight to f4 checking the king after moving the king now can you see the idea of Capablanca why did he vacate it on f4 what was his idea it looks like it was like a drawish position a drawish chess game but all of a sudden black has a winning move and black played Capablanca played knight takes on g2 and after this move the London chess champion resigned sacrificing the knight because black has a passed pawn the past h pawn can't be stopped amazing isn't it so all of a sudden bang one move and it is all over so well this was also one of the typical examples of the beautiful simple elegant and aesthetically beautiful chess games of capablanca so the possible continuation is actually very simple knight takes on g2 but simply pushing the h pawn and basically the h pawn is going to be a queen so knight to e3 and then h2 how to stop there is no defense so black can play some prophylactic moves there is time for playing some defensive moves d4 knight to d5 bishop to a5 check knight to e4 before <laughs> getting too late promoting the queen before it is too late so okay uh, so this was also a typical example of the chess games of capablanca he had this simple and effortless looking style but actually he was always a one step forward uh, from his opponent so that's why he was basically seeing into the future 
and with his simple style he with this style with going into the end game territory he he has actually managed to won many many chess games in his col colorful chess career so thank you so much for watching i hope that you have enjoyed watching this chess game let me show you once again the final position so uh, after checking the king what else moving the king and then capturing on g2 and you can stop the h pawn so after basically knight takes on g2 white resigned so thank you so much for watching and i hope to see you next time take care stay safe and bye bye